I think it's time to do another list. Hello guys, welcome! Or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back! I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and with this one, we're going to be doing another ranking of classic Doctor Who writers when it comes to my series of videos devoted to the ranking of classic Doctor Who writers, script writers, etc. and so forth, of this beautiful, iconic show that a lot of us know and love, Doctor Who. Now, when it came to the classic writers that I'm doing in this ranking, these are writers who, my God, contributed so much to the show, and without them, I just feel like New Who would have no leg to stand on. And before, I did a video on Robert Holmes, then I did one on Malcolm Hulk, and now I'm going to do one on Terrence Dix. Now, Ter- oh. Whenever I say Terrence Dix, I- I totally don't say the last name Dix in a good way. It just- it always comes across as being obscene, doesn't it? I'll get better about that one day. Now back to the video. <laughs> okay, so with Terrence Dix, he is mostly known as a script editor from Classic Who. That's what he's mostly known for, but he definitely did six really monumental stories for Classic Doctor Who. And guys, letting you know right now, right now, if I missed a story of the six stories that I saw, like if it turns out there was another story he wrote I completely forgot about, let me know in the comment section. Please let me know. I'll do a re-ranking. When I say missed stories, I mean stories that were in the TV show, not like in a novelization or not like, you know, a short that, of course, I didn't, I didn't see somewhere. I'm talking about actual within the context of the show itself. That's what I mean. So, Terrence Dix, we're going to be coming at least favorite down to most favorite. So from number six down to number one. And let's get into one of the very excellent contributors to Doctor Who, good old Terrence. I also should tell you, I'm ranking Terrence Dix's stories, but I'm not ranking him as a person. I do not look at the personality or, you know, the politics behind the writer. I look at the writing itself. That's what I'm going with when ranking these stories. So, at number six, guys, please, I'm telling you now, I don't hate any of Terrence's stories. This just fell where it did. And I'm going to explain why it's simply not my favorite. Number six, we have the fourth Doctor's first story, Robot. Again, guys, there are a lot of good elements to this story. Tom Baker is great as the Doctor from the very beginning. Sarah Jane Smith is good. I like meeting Harry Sullivan. Unit is there. Love seeing them. The idea of the robot becoming more humanized or sympathizing with Sarah Jane Smith because she showed kindness to it. Very cool. That fascist um, regime of the scientists. I love it. And the actress who played the lead, like, what she said, she's like, she's a feminist through and through, but, like, as it is with any sort of extremity of mindset, she is just a fascist. And that's what the actress said who played her. She played her to perfection. She's like, I went over the top. And she's like, I loved it. And she did a very good job in the way she went over the top. Very good. It just simply is not going to ever stand out to me as my favorite story of Terrence's or ever the fourth Doctor's. And then there was that ending where it's really reminiscent of um, King Kong. And I'm not against it, but I'm just not that crazy about that concept. But I understood why they went there. They were going for the epicness and they wanted to go for probably like, you know, a throwback. And throwbacks are perfectly fine. It's just not my favorite, but overall throwbacks are perfectly fine. Now, coming at number five, I'm going to explain. Hear me out. Number five, we're going to have the brain of Morbius. And here's why. Okay, there was some slight contention in my previous video where I ranked it low on Robert Holmes's list because Terrence Dix wrote it, then Robert Holmes rewrote it. And I, I did not know where it fell because I did not know who wrote what, and I knew Ta Terrence was not necessarily happy about this. Um, but in speaking with people here on YouTube, well, yes, of course there was some slight, you know, mis you know, communication problems. Terrence was unavailable to be, you know, reached because he was on holiday, and so Robert did rewrites. And but eventually Terrence grew to accept these rewrites. So it helped me have a kinder reflection on the brain of Morbius. But since Robert Holmes did most of the rewrites, this is technically Robert Holmes' stories more than it is Terrence Dix's because Terrence even said, remove my name from it because it's not my work. So now I know that where it falls, I know it belongs more to Robert than it does to 
Terrence. But I'm ranking it to this in this level of the list because I shall do a separate video where I talk about my re my change of thought on the brain of Morbius itself. But it's got a lot of good there. There are some flaws I find too, but overall it is a lot of good stuff is in the brain of Morbius. I will talk to that on its own video where I give credit credit sorry credit to where credit is in fact due. But that belongs more to Robert now than it does to Terry. And I admit, yes, see, Miss May, the Philadelphia Hoovian, admit that, hey, sometimes in your lack of knowledge about something, you can be wrong. That I might not have been fully objective or correct when judging the brain of Morbius initially. But I'll separate that and do a video on it later. It'll take a while to get to that video, because I got a lot of videos to do. Whew, sorry. So, now we have, as number four, we have the five doctors. I freaking love the five doctors, okay? I know it gets some flack for being pure fan service. I'm fine with the fan service. That's why I'm watching it, for the fan service. I am one of those people who, I love fan service as long as it's done well. I do not get sick of fan service as long as it's done well. It's done well here. I know some people have a problem with the doctors being separated for so long. I am fine with that. It gave a contrast to the three doctors where the doctors were working together very often and even to the two doctors later on. But this one where we got with the five doctors, they're separated. It gives a different element and different idea. I thought a lot of attention was voted to them very well and their companions, it would, they were done really well too. And also, the villain, very well realized, the Dark Zone or whatever it was called, very well realized, how they all got kidnapped, very well realized and put into the Dark Zone or whatever the zone is called. Again, very good. The Master, he's brought in this too. And you got the Cybermen who are in there as well. They're easy to kill, but they're school. They're in there. And also, with that one robot creature, I can't remember what he was called, but who had those spears that would just shoot and kill the Cybermen really quickly. What a good robot realization. Or rev the way it was realized was very good. I love the five doctors. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's a very good story if you want to be purely objective about it. Now we have number three. A story whew, that people are probably going to be like, how dare you rank this so high? I rank it high because it is actually a very good story. If you choose to look at it in a different way or you choose to look at it more objectively, like lean back and give it a chance. And that is from the fourth doctor's last season, State of Decay. This is a story that, spoiler alert, has vampires in it. Okay, spoiler done. And I love that. Um, it took me a while to appreciate this story, story. When I first saw it, I was not crazy about it. Then I saw it again, and I liked it a lot better. Then I saw it again, and now I freaking love this story. It's well done. It is well acted, well written. It is so well written. It's actually very intricate, very good world building, and very good addition to the E Space trilogy. And it shows how middle stories don't always have to be regarded as being the worst part of a trilogy. No, I think State of Decay holds up to the full cir the first story, Full Circle, very well. It's a very good link between Full Circle and Warrior's Gate. But I admit I'm being subjective here, but I think it's actually a very, very, very good story. Now we have number two. Oh, one of my favorite of the fourth Doctor stories. Haunting, chilling. It is... Do you think you know what it is? Do you? Do you? You should. Because it's Horror of Fang Rock. I've said so many excellent things about this story. I don't know if I could say any more. I just don't know if I can. Because I've said so much great things about it in so many other videos. But Horror of Fang Rock is wonderful. We've got the Rutans. I know that some people don't like the way the Rutans are realized. It's like, how are they this, you know, species that can contend with the Centaurans when they're like this big blob? I just, it doesn't affect me. They're they can kill people easily by shocking them with electricity to, to, to death. I think the um, lighthouse is a very good environment, and when the ship crashes onto the rocks, 
small mini island that the lighthouse is on. Those characters are a very good introduction. Leela is wonderful. But also with this one, um, I love how overall the Doctor really embraces Leela's warrior, just rash personality. Where she just threatens to kill someone for not listening to the Doctor. She's like, listen to the Doctor or I will so like rip your heart out or stab you or something. And uh, the fourth Doctor just smiles and says, and says well, you heard her. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Then Leela slaps the woman for screaming because she was screaming because she was hysterical when she heard that someone died. Beautiful, politically incorrect stuff. And now we come to our number one, where this was written with another person, and but he was that Terrence was definitely one of the one of the two chief writers to this story. And this oh. One of the greatest stories in Doctor Who history, The War Games. A ten-parter that does not, it just doesn't, it doesn't lose momentum for me at all. And here's the funny thing, Terrence, uh, for what I recall, Terrence was not crazy about this story. Because Terrence loves shorter stories. This was a ten-parter he was obliged to fill. Um, and him and Malcolm Hawk, Malcolm Hawk was the other person who wrote The War Games. And Malcolm Hawk was very good at drawing a long story out and making, helping it still be well-paced. And you see that with this. You see Malcolm Hawk's um, contribution and the ability of how well-paced it is. But you see Terrence's skill as a writer as well because Terrence is very good at telling a story in a good, neat fashion. And Terrence, he's like, his chief con um, belief about this story, it's way too long. He's not too crazy about the story, but I beg to disagree. I think he did a very good job, as well as Malcolm, a very good job writing the war games. It is a very, probably one of the best stories, if not the best story, for a doctor to end on with all this happening, there's a mist, and there are all these, you know, wars occurring, and then it turns out it's something else is going on, and then at the end, there is the trial, where the doctor's on trial for stealing the TARDIS and leaving Gallifrey. It's all good stuff is wound up in there, leading to an incredible, incredible experience, and another reason for why. The second Doctor's era is one of my favorite eras in Doctor Who. So guys, thank you so much. This is my ranking of Terrence Dick stories. Uh, God, I gotta get better at saying that last name. Sorry, my ranking of Terrence Dick stories, and I hope you guys like my ranking. What is your ranking? Of course, I'm going to be different than yours. Of course, I'm going to be. I am human. I cannot help this. And I admit, um, I might post a video, a, a different video. My next video will be a different subject, just to give you a variety. Sorry, to give you variety while I'm doing this list. That's all it is. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. You guys were awesome yet again. Yet again. Bye, guys.